and where you're from, but any questions you have for both JP and myself, let me get us started here. My name is Michael Afito. Thank you. This is our 11th Luxury Lunch and Learn. Uh, it's, it's been consistent since April 10th, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, same time, same place. Uh, if you want to register for future uh, Luxury Lunch and Learns, literally go to LuxuryLunchAndLearn.com. I'll have my assistant type that into the chat feature, but Luxury Lunch and Learn. On Wednesday of this week, I have my good friend, someone you know as well. We attended your uh, awards uh, assembly, uh, uh, Dustin Black. Dustin's going to be on Wednesday. Then I have John Chet Black Friday. Next week, I have Eric Sachs from Breakthrough Broker on and Peter from Box Brownie. So um, looking forward to having our future guest. And we have some exciting guests even beyond that. We're going to carry this thing. The feedback's been great. So we're going to carry this on uh, post-COVID-19, which I hope is sooner than later. So uh, JP, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, uh, you and I have known each other for a couple of years now, but tell me a little bit about you and your company. I think you guys are in what your eighth year. Is that correct? Yeah, and uh, hey man, good to connect with you again. Uh, uh, I love our relationship as it developed in, in a short amount of time. What we've known each other about a year now. Seems like it's been forever, but really been about a couple a year. years now. A year and a half, it's two years. years. Yeah, yeah. But we'll, we'll thank my better half for, for our connections there through uh, through Capital Title. So. Uh, I know I, we just got to make you a Texas resident next. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying. My wife's not on board, but I'm trying. Have her, have her come down and stay with us for a week. We'll, 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 uh, we'll uh, maybe change her mind a bit. Yeah. We go down to Denton. Uh, her, uh, her mother lives down in Denton. So we were down. Oh, gosh. Great. Here. And that's the hold up. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Seriously. We'll show her downtown McKinney where Gigi lives and, uh, and every, how, how wonderful it is. So. That's awesome. Bring her down. Let us go to some of your town. Yeah. But uh, yeah, JPAR, JPAR is JPAR Nation, as, as we call it now, affectionately call it. It's been uh, in business for about eight years. I started the company here in Frisco, Texas, out of, uh, out of my home in uh, September of 2011. So September of this year will actually be nine years. Okay. It's already, can't believe it's already May, but. Uh, I know. Losing track of time. Yeah. Yeah. Quarantine. Quarantine certainly hasn't slowed down time. That's for sure. If anything, yeah. it's made uh, days just run all together. So, uh, but um, I myself have been in the business for about 16 years. Started in 2000. Got my license in late 2014, 2004 in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. I was there for an engineering gig. I was a, an engineer previously uh, from being uh, previously uh, before I, I, I became a, a realtor. And uh, decided one day just to kind of uh, really cold, cold turkey quit, um, go and uh, check out this whole real estate thing. My neighbor across the street was a mortgage broker and uh, he was leaving in the morning to go play golf. He was coming back at night when I was coming back from the manufacturing plant and uh, he'd be unloading his golf clubs. And uh, yet he drove a, a seven series and, you know, had a really nice home. And one day I remember asking, I was like, man, what do you do for a living? You know, I'm a mortgage broker. I'm in real estate. You know, and those were the days that everybody was stamping loans, right? Remember that? Oh, yeah. So it was a good time for to be a mortgage broker. Uh, but anyway, so it got me interested in real estate for a lot of different reasons, which everybody could probably uh, resonate with. And um, was a rookie of the year. I was top producer. I actually became a luxury agent in my market selling lakefront properties uh, in Lexington, South Carolina, where we now have an amazing uh, office there uh, right on downtown Lexington, South Carolina. Beautiful Lake Murray. So I developed a lakefront property uh, called Spence's Island. It was an island that we've attached a causeway to it. Developed nine very exclusive uh, gated lots. Uh, and that gave me the cash to, to start to move back to Texas and start JPAR in September 2011. So uh, wonderful time ever since. Decided to start this company then and uh, never looked back. Of course, uh, of course, I knew that we would be here today. 14 states, 2,500 agents. No, 14 not. states. Not at all. Intended to start the company and really only uh, uh, only uh, have a, a team of maybe 20 agents, you know, and that quickly changed as, as uh, agent attraction really um, pushed to growth. And, uh, and here we are today. So I wore many hats. I've been a realtor. I've been a rookie. I've been a realtor. I've been a top producer. I've been a team leader. I've been a broker. I've been a broker owner. Uh, I've been a founder, CEO, entrepreneur. So uh, I think one thing that makes JPAR uh, what it is today is really it was founded by agents. It's run by agents. Just about everybody 
on our management team is, is an agent, has experience selling homes. So that, uh, that really shows out there in the trenches and how we support our agents. And talk, talk to me a little bit about um, your management team uh, as well. So first off, 14, you're in 14 states right now, which is expanding. I, it seems like you know, every week I look in and, and I see a post that you guys are now in Michigan. And um, I think uh, you know, the Midwest is coming. So who knows, maybe, yeah. maybe Illinois is next. You know? <laughs> but you guys yeah, we've got, uh, you know, we, we've moved along to Sunbelt states and moved up all the way to, to Maryland. And then all of a sudden these Midwest states started popping up. Uh, uh, Colorado was announced uh, last week. Michigan, uh, we're, we're inking. Uh, well, Kentucky, Kentucky was uh, Louisville, Kentucky was uh, a couple weeks ago. So, uh, which is right there in Indiana, Kentucky, kind of all in the same line. She's actually on on the Indiana side of the river, hmm. uh, but uh, she's she's really sells in Louisville on the other side. So, uh, yeah, we've got that. We've got uh, Alaska that's coming on board. And I'll give you guys a bit of an insight on that. So, didn't think that was going to happen, but uh, nice. Alaska. You know, nice. I, the timing's perfect because I didn't want to go to Alaska in January. I can't wait to go visit in uh, in, in May, June. Yeah, t take uh, Lauren on a Alaskan cruise. That's one of my buckets. Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't do cold weather. That's why we live down here. Yeah, yeah. I don't blame it. So um, you're, I, I mentioned leadership teams. So, you know, successful businesses, successful entrepreneurs, they have successful teams, right? Uh, yeah. You know, key, key. Um, uh, you know, I'm watching this um last dance with Michael Jordan, right? Oh, really great, yeah. There's some key elements mm -hmm. to every successful team, right? So yeah. you brought on some pretty big hitters um, uh, from, uh, so talk to me a little bit about um, your, your team. Yeah, you know, and to resonate a lot with uh, with the teams here, the agents that want to uh, be successful, really, um, you know, when I started becoming successful was uh, early on in my career, just because I realized that I couldn't do everything myself and I wasn't good at everything myself. So I had to go and let go to grow. I tell that to our franchisees as well. A little silly uh, analogy uh, to grow. You got to learn to let go. Uh, my little Juliet will sing a wonderful rendition of let it go if you let her. So uh, <laughs> good, good times. Uh, but yeah, the team is uh, comprised of myself. As, so first of all, JPAR is owned by a company called Vesuvius Holdings. Uh, which I also own and I, and I started. Uh, Vesuvius Holding is a private equity holding firm that a lot of people don't know owns more than just JPAR. Um, it owns JPAR the brokerage, it owns JPAR the franchising, owns uh, commercial entities, current, uh, owns um, several trademarks, owns a tech company and some other things. So my day-to-day my -day activity varies. Uh, and owns equities, a lot of stock investment. But uh, so the team at Vesuvius, which I won't bore you with, I'm the CEO of Vesuvius. But then down to the brokerage and a franchise level, everybody here understands is uh, Mark Johnson, which ran Tom Ferry. Uh, he was the senior vice president of Tom Ferry and was the guy behind the currents for Tom uh, with the con and uh, getting Tom on stage and getting all the coaches uh, lined up. So Mark, Mark's excellent, by the way. Great yep. guy. Uh, really enjoy. Uh, just a you know, high integrity guy and just uh, very smart. Uh, like you mentioned, comes from Tom Ferry. Tom was just in town pre-COVID-19. He does an amazing job. Yeah. People that w are watching this live stream that, you know, might not be necessarily real estate agents even either. I have one gal that is selling her home locally here and she always tunes in. I have a buddy of mine that's a financial advisor in Scottsdale. He listens. So, so people that don't know Tom Ferry, he's, he's well-respected, you know, one of the top, if not top real estate coaches in, in yeah. the industry. Yeah, it's, it's a toss up between him and Buffini. So they're both great. They have different different uh, structures and different ways to go about mm -hmm. uh, into the agents, as you know. Uh, so Mark runs the brokerage. A gentleman by the name of Jeff Lewis, uh, who was the president for Remax International. Um, and it's uh, 100,000 agents and I don't know how many countries Remax is in. Uh, but he uh, left the Remax, retired and came out of retirement to head uh, our franchising company, JPAR Franchising, which is in 13 states, 14 states really, because it also operates in Texas. Uh, so they're, they're, that's our baby. That's our growing, uh, needs attention, toddler that's got to get up and, and walk. So as any startups, it's uh, uh, capital intensive, it's labor intensive, it's time intensive, it requires me to be on airplanes. I miss those days of flying. I'll never complain about flying ever again. Yeah, I know, I know, I miss, right? miss but, it. Uh, yeah, you like me. I mean, I was on airplanes every week, so. Yeah. Uh, we have we have a backlog of grand opening as soon as it's safe and, and prudent to go fly. Uh, I'll be uh, pretty sure I'll be uh, back to back every week for, for a good two months. 
but uh, yeah, so that's that's franchising. Uh, then uh, we just hired uh, Justin Tracy, which some people may not know who he is. Justin is the was the founder of Realty Generator, uh, sold out to market leader. For those of us who've been in business long enough to to, to use some of the old uh, CRM IDX systems that were available back then, and then uh, after his non compete was up, started uh, KV Core and uh, conversion, which turned KV Core and uh, became a um, uh, now sold it to Inside Real Estate. Lauren, you want to say hello? I think my, my, my wife is going to go to lunch. Hey, you're oh, better, better half. half. Hey. You're better half. Hey there. Good to see you. Hi. I'm actually going to go to lunch with Tiffany right now. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, Mark and I were just on a call with some of the other business partners, and we've got some stuff coming up I want to talk to you about. So. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. But I'm going to include Tiffany on it, too. So I don't need to All right. No okay. worries. You want anything from this era? I'm good. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So, so Thanks, next play. week, next Tuesday, we, we're doing our first, you know, we, I have five courses approved for CE in Texas, JP, and we're doing our first online CE class uh, because of COVID-19, we're able to uh, pivot a little bit. So we're doing our first, uh, basically breaking into luxury. It's a three hour CE course next Tuesday uh, online. So uh, excited about that. Good, yeah, I mean, you, you've got great content and the experience is there. Um, you know, a lot of agents uh, uh, really have the big question is how do I break into the luxury market uh, and uh, how do I increase my sales, basically. Uh -huh. And then some of them, hopefully no JPAR agents, but uh, I think we provide a very a wealth of value and knowledge to our agents every single day starting at 8 a.m. Uh, but hopefully a lot of agents understand that uh, they got to invest their business and they have to invest and I can't think of anything uh, better than, than investing in some of the luxury training and material that you provide uh, to give these agents uh, an upper hand on uh, on the competition and understand various aspects of, of our industry. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. But uh, yeah, we're always trying to raise the bar and, and bring more value and uh, looking forward to, to next Tuesday. Uh, let's, let's jump into some of these questions on uh, pivoting. You know, obviously we're in unprecedented times and um, I, I was on a training for actually your company a couple weeks ago, and um, I, I, I don't know what the price point is, but you guys are offering um, these virtual tours. They, they call Matterport tours for those of you not in the real estate industry, but uh, it's basically the, the 3D walkthrough tours where when you're in, uh, you know, you, you click on a picture and then there's a little dot, you know, a little yeah. bit further, and then you zoom in and you can look up, down, and it's pretty cool. I'm, uh, you know, I have several uh, of those on our properties. And um, so to talk to me a little bit about, that's one of the things that you guys adapted really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, you added at the, at the onset of COVID-19, just to bring more value to your agents and differentiate. So yeah. talk to me a little bit about um, that, as well as maybe other things that you guys are doing right now to pivot during this time. Yeah, you know, we've always uh, been very innovative and, um, we were in the real estate business. We know we know the players. We know who's who. That that Matterport was a relationship that we've had through um, through the years with. And actually, we came from Realtor.com, uh, but we were able to work out the first enterprise solution for Matterport for brokerage, uh, which gave our agents uh, one one click stop uh, to order the Matterport tour and upload it and do everything they didn't want to do to it at a very deep discounted prices versus what they could go and get on the shelf. Uh, plus some exclusive content that they wouldn't have had if they don't have, didn't have this partnership. So we're excited about that. But yeah, you're right. It's not just really a 3D virtual tour. A lot of people don't, don't know this, but it's augmented reality. So you can actually move furniture around uh, and, and put certain, if it's an empty house, you can actually stage it with, with big furniture uh, through augmented reality to see what it looks like. So uh, it's a lot cheaper than paying for staging. So it's really cool. Uh, you can close cabinets, open cabinets, uh, so almost a, a moving live tour of the house. And it, uh, it serves well. I mean, if you look at our sales uh, year over year, uh, pretty flat. So we'll take that. Uh, usually we'd like to be about 30% up, which is how our first quarter uh, ended up but uh, because of our growth. Uh, but yeah, we were flat and didn't lose market share. So God, we call that a blessing. And a lot has to do with just the resilience of our agents, the professionalism. We don't hire part-time agents in JPAR. They're all full-time agents, so they didn't necessarily go around for the hills when uh, when COVID hit or started looking for an alternative career. They they can conquer down and with tools like Matterport. Uh, we've also launched uh, IntraLend, which is uh, another great uh, app that allows our agents to in our lenders. I prefer lenders that never really meet with 
face to face. They can handle all the all the quotes with with uh, with a borrower online and receive multiple offers, multiple quotes from lenders. Uh, very competitive lending market right now uh, with some of the lending costs going up. Uh, so it's great to have a marketplace for our clients can go shop around. Mutualend provides that. So uh, plus a bunch of other things that uh, we're working on behind the scenes for our agents. So we're excited to open reopen the offices for good. Uh, we have uh, the brokerage has 26 offices in, in, in Texas. So uh, agents, I think I think the agents are more excited than us because uh, judging by uh, I can't work from home anymore. Get me out of here. Open my offices back up. Uh, you can relay, right? As much as we have best offices ready to get out. So uh, agents are coming out in our offices in force. Yeah, no, that that's, uh, you know, I, I've been to some of your offices. You guys are doing some, some great things. Um, you know, talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, talking about being successful. Uh, this is a consistent question I've been asking a lot of our guests, but in your opinion, you know, those agents, those team leaders, those brokerages, that will be successful post COVID-19 are those that have blank in common. You know, um, focus is one thing without a doubt. They've got to be able to focus on, on the goal and uh, it won't be easy for some, It'll be easier for some others and not so easy for others. Uh, you got to focus on um, your value proposition, stay true to your clients, really depends it's kind of an open, a broad question because what will make us successful, continue to make us successful as JPART Nation, as a brokerage is entirely different than what a small boutique brokerage will need to focus on in order to be successful. So, um, so we're not really speaking to a broad audience, but let's say from an agent perspective, what's gonna make the agents successful is to get really, I don't wanna say beg, but really to get in front of the clients, past clients, friends, family, and let them know that you want their business, that you are the most reasonable uh, uh, choice for them as an agent, as they will undoubtedly eventually need a new home or sell their home. That is agents run into people every single day, whether it's a grocery store, whether it's Best Buy, whether it's at the mall, whether it's a restaurant, uh, and every single person there is not homeless. They either rent a home or they own a home. You know, and how good you are with engaging those individuals and staying on top of them, uh, never giving up, uh, is really a key. I have a, a silly acronym that I that I came, came up with and from the marketing, from the word marketing. And uh, it served me well in the downturn and it served me well starting JPAR, growing JPAR and everything else. But marketing stands for make a ruckus, M-A-R, make a ruckus, keep engaging the individual, never give up. That's what marketing to me stands for. I've always made a ruckus in marketing, whether as an agent, you know, putting up billboards or uh, farming, door knocking, open houses, social media, that was before social media was big. Um, MySpace, we had the MySpace days. MySpace. <laughs> before uh, Zillow, before Trulia, before all that, really it was all about uh, getting your name out there, newspaper. I mean, we were doing newspaper ads. I was doing newspaper ads. And while every other agent was was getting buying the classified ads, I was buying the hot property ads, you know, the, the picture ads in the newspaper, which were quite a bit more expensive, but that was making a ruckus. Uh, and that has helped me uh, grow my business year after year, even after the crash of 2008. I grew my business exponentially after that. Um, and I think that's going to help JPAR as a company that can afford to do those things, increase their marketing budget instead of decreasing their marketing budget. That will, will uh, allow us to gain more market share. The small brokerages, I think uh, if you're a brokerage that uh, relies on, on sales uh, and not so much on the agent growth and the agent selling, if you're a broker owner that uh, still has to sell, this is a time for you to probably scale down the number of agents that aren't selling so you can focus on production uh, because that's how you're gonna pay the bills. Uh, I don't expect the smaller brokerages to be able to compete in value proposition with some of the larger brokerages that are out there in terms of what all uh, to some of these agents. We literally throw the kitchen sink at the agents. It's, it's almost a disfavor uh, to some of the agents that are with this in terms of what they can offer to, to uh, their agents, other than maybe that one-on-one -on -one coaching you know, relationship oh, or not. Sure. Uh, which is key, um, and some people want that, you know. So that's uh, that's what's going to help the two the two grow. Well, you you mentioned um, make a ruckus, right? So the, um, that's one of the things that we always teach agents, right? When everybody goes left, go right. You know, differentiate. Jack Trout said, "Differentiate or die." You know, I've heard uh, somebody recently say, "Differentiate or charge less." So 
you know, everybody knows a real estate agent. So what do you, as an agent, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as if, if you know, the one gal that's selling her home, what, what, what are you guys doing to, to make your product or your, your property different from the competition, right? So that's, um, you know, developing a unique value proposition, doing some outrageous marketing. I literally was uh, cleaning my office and I, I don't see it in front of me right now, but I have this old ad of this property I was selling that had a 22 car garage. And it was a creative ad that we, we, we created towards the car aficionados. And it was basically a 22 car garage for sale for 10.9 million comes with a, a beautiful 30,000 square foot home, you know, five bedrooms, you know, but just, you know, tweaking it, right? So make a ruckus, differentiate, um, you know, everybody knows a real estate agent. And so, you know, Texas has the third most amount of real estate agents, you know, uh, California's the first, Florida's second, California's third, right? So they grow everything bigger in Texas. So you have 20 plus offices in Texas, you have a lot of competition, you know, what, what what has, you know, you kind of shared a little bit with your philosophy with Make a Rutkus, um, you know, anything post, you know, COVID-19 that you guys are planning uh, that you can, don't mind sharing that, yeah. that you're looking to, you know, differentiate and hit the ground running because there's a lot of people pulling back right now, JP. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 that's usually the first thing that people eliminate, right, is their marketing budget. They, they yeah. trim and, you know, that... Wow. And I'll tell you, that's a mistake. You look at uh, Henry Ford's uh, quote, the man that tries to uh, cut marketing expenses to gain more sales is as naive as the guy turning back clock to try to get more time. So uh, that's, um, that's not going to happen. You know, uh, you need to look at your, your expenses and figure out what's frivolous. In, in accounting, we call it discretionary and non-discretionary uh, expenses. Uh, you got to look at uh, the discretionary stuff and, and non-discretionary and figure out what uh, what's working for you and what isn't uh, with the goal to not reduce that spend, but to reallocate in the hopes of increasing the marketing spend. Um, you know, it's really simple. If you break it down to an agent perspective, look at your last 12 months worth of sales. Uh, let's just keep it simple. You've sold 10 homes, you know, hopefully mm -hmm. you didn't have, let's say 10 homes and five of those came from Zillow leads. Okay. In the last 12 months. Your goal is not to decrease the Zillow lead spend. Your goal is to double your Zillow lead spend because I'm most certainly that you got a return on investment in those five homes that you sell. Um, and then maybe perhaps cut the things that aren't working. I don't know, maybe direct farming or maybe, um, uh, I don't know, uh, leads some other avenue that you've closed zero of. You know, whatever it is, you've got to go really tweak those knobs and, and figure it out what it is and then increase your marketing spend. Right now, a lot of people are looking to cut your expenses, cut their expenses. You need, and there's, so there's cheap advertisement to be had, whether it's realtor.com, whether it's leads, whether it's billboards, whether it's TV advertisement, whether it's radio, whether it's direct farming, there's cheap advertisement to be had right now. Go and, uh, and spend a buck or two uh, to try to gain market share because right now, a lot of agents are looking to lead the business. This is where you as an agent need to go and, and gather and gain that market share and aggressively market yourself. You know, look, JPAR is wonderful. I look at, I'm proud of the company that we built. Actually, is that is that a notepad that you have there that's JPAR behind you? Is that, uh, is that yeah, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is from one of your events. Yes, sir. There you go, right? We're everywhere, right? Uh -huh. You know, for, for as, as young as brokerage as we are, uh, we're everywhere. We've created a brand. Uh, but the brand we've created is really for the agents. It's not for the buyers and sellers. The buyer and seller absolutely does not care who JPAR is. They want to know that Mike Lafito is the right agent for them based on the perception that Mike Lafito puts out in his marketing message. You know, if you want to get in the luxury market, don't advertise mobile homes. All right. If you want to go and play with the millionaires, stop eating at the dollar menu. Okay. That's that simple of, of, of an analogy. Make noise in those avenues make noise in those rings you know if you're gonna go I, I hang out if i were selling real estate and i do and i don't anymore but i hang out at the cowboys club not because i want to rub elbows with anybody because i love hanging out at the cowboys club very exclusive club country club setup uh, if i were a golfer i would hang out at the country club right i can't tell you the fortunes that have been made at country clubs golf courses and, and places like that just from meeting people and started talking to people about engaging i'm assuming you like people I'm assuming you like engaging people. You're somewhat of an extrovert. You're not afraid to engage in conversations, right? You need to go and be engaged in conversation with those people that uh, have wealth and have a significant um, 
value and, uh, and net worth. And you know where those people are. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great point. So if you go to the country club, you go to fill in the blank, doesn't matter, but you engage with people and people like you and trust you. You know, if you're with Remax or JPAR or Coal Banker or fill in the blank, you know, at the end of the day, it's a people to pay business, right? Theodore sure. Roosevelt once says, nobody cares how much you know until they know you care. So be likable, be trustworthy. These are all common denominators of, of successful people. You got it. Yeah. You know, if, uh, if Coal Banker or, or uh, I don't know, Sotheby or uh, JPAR or whatever, if, if, if brand mattered, one, one company would have the majority of market share. Real estate is so fragmented. You look at how much, how much market share is divided among all the different companies out there versus, you know, you look at soda, you know, you look at uh, Coca-Cola has like 40% of the, of the soft drink market share. There's not a single real estate company that has 40% market share. Right. They're remotely close. You know, there are so many different brands and so many, because really brands these days speak to the agent, not to the consumer. So create your own brand as, as an agent. Uh, and uh, if you want to get into the luxury market, I'm assuming that's what you want to do. That's why you're here listening to Mike and I. Blabber, uh, paint yourself as a luxury person. Paint yourself as money, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's a great point. Now, some of the things we teach. So if you're an agent, you're a broker owner, you know, you're looking to differentiate yourself, you know, once post COVID, you know, post COVID-19, you know, attend other people's broker open houses at some of the, those upper scale neighborhoods, you know, in the Texas and the Highland Park area and West Lake and South Lake and, and attend some of those broker opens or, or maybe ask other agents in your office that have listings there, you know, you could host their open houses and start to, to meet people, right? And, and feel comfortable around the product that yeah. you represent. Good. How, how, in your opinion, how is this downturn different than 2008? You know, and I, the word, and, I the word, and I use the word downturn, by the way. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm, I'm always very optimistic um, because I've been uh, a child of, for better lack of words, of 9 11. I was an engineer, aerospace engineer in 9 11, and I did great after 9 after 11. Uh, in the aerospace industry. I'm uh, uh, an agent in the, that was selling in the market crash. I did even better after the market crash. Maybe I'm a little naive. Maybe I'm a little too optimistic. Maybe I know that I can control my own destiny and I can't control what's ahead in the future. So I'm very, very positive um, regardless. So, uh, you know, I always have the rosy, the, the, the news, the news crews, uh, the media always knows that when they talk to JP, they're going to get the rosy glass view uh, of things. And it's paying out well for me, you know, I, uh, I'm not, why be pessimistic, right? But so what, uh, what I think, if you look at the silver lining, I think there'll be fewer, fewer agents. I don't think anybody can debate that, uh, which will pan out great for JPAR because we only hire full-time agents or professionals. It'll pan out great for those agents that are the same, whether they work at JPAR or full banker or whatever. Um, I think a lot of agents are going to make a lot of money. Uh, those agents are professionals, those agents that take this business seriously. Uh, I think there's going to be still a substantial amount of sales to happen. Inventory is most definitely coming. Uh, and that's not or, or pessimist viewpoint. Uh, it is what it is. So inventory means that we're going to shift from a seller's market to a buyer's market, which means those agents that love to be listing agent, congratulations to you. You're going to have a huge portfolio of homes to sell, which means you have inventory on the shelf, which the old saying, if you list, you last, is true. You got to get those listings. You got to get it priced them right so you can sell them. Mike, you're in a tough gig. You know, luxury market, my guess is going to take a hit. Um, that's going to be the first market to be affected in terms of prices. But people are still going to buy. You know, people are going to want to look for the deal. I'm looking for deals, you know, on the luxury market. What deals are to be had? You know, who's motivated on the luxury side? Uh, right now, jobs uh, that are directly impacting sales are not driving real estate sales that much or a decline. But I am watching a uh, number of jobs, of course, you know, 30 million people with five for unemployment. But cautious with those bad news. You know, I don't want to call it fake news, but cautious on, on the news because a lot of those 30 million people are um, waste staff, bartenders, people that the moment the country opens back up, they're going to be right back to work. Not the white collar um, professional that was looking for homes. Those guys haven't been affected just yet. So um, I think the, com the country is opening back up. So I think, I think we've weathered the storm okay. I think America's going to open up and come back stronger. Uh, but we will have an asterisk and, and we will affect uh, our profitability as a company this year because of, you know, our cash cow months of April and May 
didn't you know, March and April didn't necessarily turn out to be as cash cow as we as we had hoped. So. Mm -hmm. And what are your prime months in, in Texas? Uh, you know, if you were to say, what, what are your four primary uh, months where there's more real estate transactions or homes on, listed or under contract? Is, yeah, is it the spring yeah. market? Is it March, April, May, June? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's second and third quarter entirely. It really starts in, in March and then it ends in, in October. Uh, okay. Time frame. Okay. Uh, how that, that curve shifts, it really depends on what's going on with uh, external conditions. If you look at last year, first quarter was really dead, right? So we had a really dead first quarter because the stock market, the government was shut down. I don't remember that. Uh, so the first quarter, we really had a, a, a slow start. So the, the second quarter was really the beginning of the first quarter. And then we had a killer summer. Uh, this year, of course, first quarter was super strong. Um, beat expectations by far all the way to March. And March, because March year, of course, by the time, March came around, contracts were already written and, and closings were happening regardless. Yeah. So the second quarter was squash flat for us. Uh, so we expect that to, to kind of have a really big um, climb here uh, in, uh, in the third quarter as uh, later part of the third quarter as uh, really, it's not really about, well, first of all, we've got to have homes for sale. So inventory has got to hit back on the shelf. So we don't have any here in Texas. Really? <laughs> Two, we've got, yeah, no, I mean, we've, we've, it's starting to come back around, but as you can imagine, when spring, when people put homes on the market, they didn't last four weeks. Huh. So we have less inventory now than we had last year, uh, but it's coming, it's flooding, it is flooding. We have multiple agents are slapping multiple homes on the market right now as we speak. Um, but also consumer confidence. People have to know that their jobs is safe. You know, that's, that's the, that's the underlining question that a lot of people have is, are people going to be opening up their checkbook again in, doing what America does, spend, uh, because that drives job, that drives the economy. And I'm a little uncertain about how long that's gonna take for people uh -huh. to build okay, My job is safe, sales look good. My boss told me when I have a job, yes, I can go have children. Yes, I can go buy a home uh, and whatnot. But you know, the funny thing is, what's, what's really good for real estate, as sadly as it seems, is marriages, great, but also divorces are great. Yeah. Fortunately, deaths as well. So. Yeah. Um, you know, COVID yeah. has, has, done, uh, has done definitely a fair share of, I think there's the largest number of divorce cases in the United States ever filed <laughs> during this quarantine. Is so, that right? Did you, is yeah. that, is, yeah, I mean, I, you know, people talk about, you know, the cost at what cost, you know, and people always, you know, you see these memes out there talking about, you know, there's going to be babies nine months from now and yeah. they're going to have these names, co you know, COVID or whatever, yeah. you know, because they were produced during this time. But yeah, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. There, there's very stressful times on a lot of families, not just financially, but, you know, I, I just saw a, a, a gal that I'm friends with on Instagram and she was posting a video talking about how, you know, she, she always wanted to be a, um, a homeschool her son. And, and I thought, you know, she was going in her video, I thought she was going to talk about how this time has been such, you know, great time because, you know, she's been able to do that based on e-learning. But in, in reality, she, she, you know, she turned it, it's like, no way in heck am I ever going to be homeschooling yeah. my kid after this experience. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I tell real estate agents all the time, you know, be, you know, life is what drives your business and our business, right, JP? It doesn't matter who the president yeah. is or what interest rates are or what gas prices are. Life is what drives. People are getting married. People are upsizing. People are downselling. Fortunately, people are divorcing. People die. People relocate. That life is what drives real estate. It's not yeah. who's in the White House or what interest rates are. You got it. You know, you look at uh, none of us uh, were, were around we're selling real estate in the 80s, but I mean, I predecessors were selling real estate with 18% rates right. uh, in the early 80s, you know, and, and when rates dropped 11, 12%, that was a good rate, you know, mm -hmm. in the 80s in the Reagan era. So uh, look, they were still doing it. And actually the record number of sales for the time, you got, you got to understand there's population increase is increasing exponentially, right? Yeah. Uh, whether it's Texas or whether it's the United States, our population here is growing exponentially and people need a home. That is the basic need of all. Okay, man's low, hierarchy of needs, shelter is at the bottom, right? You know, shelter is a home, so we're gonna provide that. We're always gonna be around. I think real estate is gonna be a lot more transactional as technology takes place than it has in the past, uh, which is okay if, if you can adapt technology and understand that, 
you know, as the generation Z hits the market, they're not going to be doing transactions like, like we did or like our, our parents yeah. or grandparents. So you have to adapt to that, which is fine. I mean, you know, look, uh, just, just adapt your business that way and uh, uh, it'll be fine. You know, it's, uh, it's great. You know, crank and, you know, uh, go ahead and, them and, you know, crank them up and, and uh, just keep, keep selling, trans selling homes. Right? Yeah. It's, it's good for us that homes become consumer good items on this, right? You know, where, where people buy them and throw them away a few years later to get another one. Yeah, I, I do think that you're going to notice a lot of people's priorities and what's important in a home have changed over these last 30 to 60 days. And so you might get some people that weren't thinking about moving that uh, want to move now because, you know, a home office or two home offices is important when working remotely or, you know, something yeah. that wasn't high priority before is more high pro priority and vice versa. So I do think you're going to see um, some of that, you know, over the next year to two years, uh, because many people might think there might be a second wave of what's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to me about the selling digitally. Um, do you feel like this is a new norm for agents, you know, more, you know, your wife's in the title business, more remote signings and, uh, you know, Zoom meetings. And I I'm refinancing today. I actually close at three o'clock central, two and a half percent. The lender right. told me he's never locked in a rate that lower. And so, do you feel like um, there's going to be more, we're kind of more in that digital world, listing appointments, buyer appointments, yeah. there's going to be more use of video. To talk to me a little bit about your thoughts with all of that. Yeah, without, without a doubt. We've, uh, it takes 21 days to form a habit, I said, and I think we've been at this year, at least in Texas, for, for eight weeks. This is the eighth week. Even though Texas was literally open Friday, um, it still it doesn't feel any different, to be honest with you. Uh, so we're going eight weeks now, definitely more than a 21 days to set a pattern. Um, title, if you look at uh, the title business, I, I said uh, that was prime for change anyway. The going to the company to go and, and, uh, and sign paper uh, was so antiquated and, and due for change. This has really uh, proved uh, that title can happen. From, you know, you can close a home from the comfort of your couch. Just like it was DocuSign for us as agents where we didn't have to print paper anymore. We could just electronically sign contracts. Those of us that went through that, that phase, and uh, I adopted DocuSign like it was the best thing since sliced bread as an agent perspective. And some agents were like, oh, I, I, I'm not ever going to have email a contract to my clients. I want them to read it and I want to sit. Now, I don't know anybody that's, that still prints and wants to sit in front of, uh, of, a, uh, of a client. They're all, here. here's a contract signing. Right. Click, 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 and done in, in three minutes. That's what's happening to the title business. The same thing. The, the mentality, the shift, really a shift that's happening to that. So answer your question digitally without a doubt i'm excited about that um, i think uh, bill shattuck the owner of capital title is excited about that i think a lot of title companies are excited about that yeah. because if you embrace that change uh you can really generate a lot more revenue without having all this heavily burdened you know brick and mortar locations and, and whatnot you can i don't know about you but our team has been working from home for the last seven weeks we've been able to accomplish amazing things as a brokerage it's, it's across the united states by using technology and zoom and and, uh, and really without skipping a beat. And really, to be honest with you, it's made us more productive. Do yeah. we still have brick and mortar? Most definitely. Um, I think we still need smaller offices like we have. We still need brick and mortar offices around. Uh, you still need those conference rooms. You still need to meet with people. You still need a place to get out of the house. Starbucks is not conducive for, for working. It's not a good working environment. Not everybody has a good work situation at home, whether it's kids or whether the home may not have an office or whatever. So. Uh, that's important for us. We do believe in a brick and mortar setup, uh, manageable, sizable brick and mortar office. So, way. But um, I love how buyers and sellers are learning to use technology so that they don't have to go see 50 homes. That they understand that the quality of virtual tours, like Matterport, is so good that I don't have to bother my agent with showing these 10 homes that I know none of them I'm not going to like anyway. I just want to go look at one or two. Yeah, I call it the house hunter way of selling homes, right? If you ever watch HGTV, you look at three homes, they, they show you three homes and that's done, right? Right, right. Well, that's really what a lot of agents are doing these days because the buyer doesn't want to be in more homes than they have to. You know, sure. he is caught up with uh, the homes that they don't need to go see. You know, that uh, they're just, it, it was really, really more of a curiosity uh, showing than anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, one more question and we'll let you go before the question though that, what, what's that red hat back there what's that say make, make agents oh, you want to see it, I'm happy this is uh, one of my most 
proudest ruckus moments. We couldn't we couldn't keep these on the shelf that uh, in in Las Vegas. I think you may have one, right? Make agents, yeah. We I I, I brought one home. The kids loved it. Yeah, make agents great again. So that's this is our motto. Uh, we certainly believe in uh, being professional uh, and uh, really, really. Uh, look, I was embarrassed of being a realtor when I got my real estate license. I never wore a badge a day of my life. I was embarrassed putting open house signs on it. Uh, never wrapped my car to say I'm a realtor. Uh, couldn't wait to have the broker designation because I, I felt like it was a little more elevated than than, uh, than being a realtor because of the level of professionalism. Let's face it, let's call it what it is. In this, many agents don't belong in this business. Uh, so I want to. Our goal is to, as JPAR, and we have a productivity standard. Uh, we focus on full-time agents. Uh, our goal to, is really not to have fifty thousand ghost agents or our goal is to have 50,000 professionals that uh, the consumer knows and when they're dealing with a JPAR real estate agent, JPAR nation agent, uh, they're working with some great agents. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, um, you know, with our course and our trainings, we're all about raising the bar. Literally, I was just watching yesterday, I was flipping through some properties and one of the main pictures uh, in our multiple listing services of this home, it had a two-car uh, garage and um, like two single car garage and, and one of the garage doors was open by like two feet and that was like the main the main picture it just looked odd I'm like what is going on here so uh, you know we're all about raising the standards um, you know ethics uh, marketing exposure negotiations all of the above uh, you talked about you know the, the unprecedented times working at home do you have a story uh, both you and your wife are used to being in the field and, and uh, you know, how are you guys, you know, adapting and do, do you have a success story or, or words of recommendation for agents, broker owners, uh, entrepreneurs that are working from home that uh, they're not used to it. They, they do some travel and it breaks things up a little bit, but now they're, they're, they're stuck in their friendly confines. Yeah. You know, Lauren and I have a unique uh, relationship because we're, we're lucky to be in the same business and we speak the same language. So, um, that, uh, that's a blessing and that's a curse too, because sometimes that's all we talk about is real estate, right? Um, look, in general, I just want to give advice, embrace change. Don't worry about the future. Uh, you can't control the future. Focus what's present, the decisions that you make now, uh, the, 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 the decisions and the, and the optics and, and the BS that you feed your brain, that's going to dictate the outcome. Uh, whether you think there's going to be another outbreak in the fall or not, it doesn't matter right now. I mean, you can't control it. If there is, we'll deal with it. Stay healthy, stay safe when that comes. Uh, for now, live life, carpe diem, as, as the Romans used to say. Um, memento mori, you know, I've, uh, I don't know where it is. I have, I have a coin, a Roman coin from Empress, Emperor uh, Marcus Aurelius that says memento mori, right? That means, remember, you, you will die. You know, so make the most out of it. I know it's a little somber, but I actually find a lot of, a lot of uh, comfort in knowing that make the most out of today uh, because tomorrow's not guaranteed. So live the life at its fullest. Um, for me, real estate has been able to provide an amazing platform for adventure, for growth, for career, for being able to, to bless others and, and meet amazing people like yourself across the United States, uh, really leave a legacy for the kids once I'm not here anymore. So, um, you know, words of wisdom, wisdom, uh, remember you'll die, make the most out of what's today, have fun doing it. We're an amazing career. Are you kidding me? I mean, do we really think we have a job? I mean, yeah, no, I, I know, that's not suck, right? Yeah, so. no, you're absolutely right. You know, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's all about perspective, right? Uh, and, you know, in college, I worked for a buddy's dad that was a moving company and I really learned to appreciate, you know, the hard labor and, but I also, also focused on education. Like, Hey, I don't, you know, I don't want to be doing that for, for a living and it made you appreciate things. Right. And uh, Dave Matthews sings a song that says eat, drink and be merry because tomorrow you will die. Right. So enjoy it. Smell the roses. We have so much, so much to be thankful for. Uh, you know, there was a NFL quarterback named Alex Smith, and they just had a, a show that came out on Friday on ESPN. He had a gruesome, right, J.J. Watt, uh, gruesome um, leg break. And, you know, just the, his optimism and, and, you know, he just had such a great attitude. So um, those of you that are struggling, you know, Zig Ziglar once says, 
said motivation doesn't last. Uh, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. Right. So sometimes you got to pick yourself off the mat each day, surround yourself with positive people. You mentioned the news. The news is negative, constant negative news. I say garbage in. A lot of people say garbage out. I say, no, garbage in, garbage stays. So what are you surrounding yourself with? You know, I love proving others wrong and making others days. So go build people up. Um, JP, if anybody wants to find more about J, uh, JPAR, um, where's a good place for them to do a little research? Uh, go to jpar.com. That's the main company website. That's got everything you need. JPAR. Mm -hmm. the jpar.com those of you yeah no i pre appreciate your time appreciate what you're doing hopefully we'll see each other at a at a industry uh, event sooner than later look forward to that for sure ready yeah. to get on the flight somewhere right yeah me too me too uh again same time same place wednesday those of you that are regular watchers uh wednesday we're going to be having my friend Dustin Black, uh, he's in the moving industry, but does some amazing silver platter, white glove type, uh, not just marketing, right. but service. Uh, uh, some of my best ideas, matter of fact, um, when I do a lot of our, our live trainings, we, we give out uh, the video brochure to agents when we do our live uh, designation training, it lights up, you can upload videos. I got this idea uh, probably seven or eight years ago from an auto industry, it was a smaller portion of this, but some of my best ideas I get outside of the industry. That's how you can be creative and outside the box. Because when you do the same things as the other 1.4 million real estate agents, uh, Einstein def defines that as insanity, right? So be different, uh, think outside the box, uh, make a ruckus, so to speak. And we're gonna be learning some best practices outside the industry on Wednesday, but you can, they correlate to any industry. So again, go to luxurylunchandlearn.com for more information on that. If you have any questions for me, shoot me a note, Michael at Marketing Luxury Group. And until next time, JP, really appreciate it. And uh, we'll Always talk credit, Mike. Appreciate it. You guys, thank you. All right, take care, man. Bye, everybody. Bye.